I lived in Nigeria, Abuja, Nigeria, which is the capital, for five months in 2011. Hi, my name is Katie Randall. I've been living in Amsterdam for the last two years. I just moved back about a month, month and a half ago. So I was in Thailand for four years working with YWAM, doing slum ministry. Mentally, emotionally, spiritually, yeah, absolutely. I was constantly tired. We were constantly out of money. We were constantly out of food. We were living basically off of rice and potatoes. Um, yeah, it was extremely taxing and draining. I didn't expect it to be as tolling on me as it really was. Where I lived, we all worked in the same area. We all worked in the same ministry. So everything we did was based around that. There wasn't much of a rest. Every day going to the slums and being in a place of, I don't know, in my mind's total depravity and depression. You're just surrounded by so much darkness. There's so much to feel for. like. Of seeing the children on the streets one day takes all the emotion out of you. It just drains you. Car accidents, people dying, people getting stabbed, danger, like our own pastor getting uh, beaten up on occasion. It's not exactly um, an uplifting, you could say, work and environment. We did have one time of rest. We went to a winter retreat. So much fun and it was so restful once we got there and we're able to just enjoy each other. I just would love to have gone away to um, a nice hotel and just rested for a bit. Or just be alone and to just be with the Lord. And that was definitely lacking. I definitely wouldn't have been able to make it four years if I hadn't had set aside time to take breaks. It's really hard to do weekends away because we're missionaries. We don't have that much money. So unless you have something that's set aside set apart for missionary, then you wouldn't really get a chance to rest. If I had been given an opportunity to go to a place of just peace and quiet, that would have made the biggest difference in my ministry and in myself personally. And I wish that we would have had time to be able to separate and regroup or just rest and enjoy each other's company rather than constantly striving to do ministry together while there is fighting going on. I know one time somebody gave me a word, something to the effect of, you're putting on cologne and going out and bathing other people. You're not actually um, bathing yourself or allowing Jesus to bathe you, but you're going out, pretty much your cup is empty and you're still trying to um, give out and pour out. That was kind of a reality check for me. In my place, I've got a guest room. You don't even have to leave. You can just sit there and just be by yourself and just rest and sleep and pray and read your Bible. That is so healing for the soul that is working 24 seven. Having a place to go and to rest is imperative for any, in my mind, any missionary overseas to actually last and not just make it, you know, a year or two or something like that and then burn out and be done. Yeah, there's definitely times where I felt extremely burnt out. I would say I was in a I was in a pretty much constant state of being burnt out. Uh, yeah, right before I was going to leave Amsterdam. Some say that it's just kind of like my grace had run out or I was just finished. I know that I could have gone a lot further had there been intervals of rest. I just was waiting for that finish line. I was just like crawling towards the finish line. Three quarters of the way through my time in Thailand, I went through a, a time of grieving um, and depression. I would go to slums every day and um, do what I knew was right and um, still loved on and served the people that I was there to serve. Um, yet I'd, I'd go, come home and I'd just sit at my desk and cry and then go to sleep and do it over again. It really took a toll on me trying to trust the Lord, let Him fill me back up. And every time that I wouldn't turn to the Lord, I would just be drained for the whole day. There's only so much emotion that you can handle with those kinds of situations. Yeah, I think burnout is a 
an extremely serious thing that needs to be looked at when going overseas to do missions. I literally shut myself in my room for one week with the heater cranked on because I was used to the heat in Thailand and didn't leave the house. I, I came back right before Christmas, so it was a busy season. Uh, about a week ago, I came back from all the busyness and I went, oh my gosh, I have nothing to do now. And then it just hit me like a bag of bricks. I was staring at this, this shelf completely stacked filled to the brim with jeans. And I'm thinking back about Africa where there's jeans and then there's skirts, that's it. And I'm just crying. I just had to walk out, I just started crying. I couldn't handle it. I just couldn't handle um, groups and social interactions and stuff. It's really hard talking to people who don't understand. I'm in mourning as well. I, I've lost so much, I have to get up, give up so much and I don't know if I was ready to give up all that. That was one of the biggest moments of culture shock throughout the whole thing from beginning to end. I just want to go home and sleep for days, weeks at a time. Oh my goodness gracious, yes, 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 yes. I realized if I had had a place to come back for a week just to rest and also to have a little bit of debriefing and talking about re-entering into the country, that would have been so helpful. That is a huge, huge, huge thing. I think it should be a must for any missionary coming back from the mission field. Let's give it to, him. to me, rest means getting away from whatever my regular schedule is. Rest for me then would be not going to slums and either getting away out of a secluded place where I wasn't, um, you know, being called and people coming over, whatever it is. Just being able to get away physically. Rest to me means you're energized. It's something that God requires of us to do. And so if he does, he, if that's a requirement of him, then it's very important to him and it's what we need as well. It's very important to us. I think I meet with God closest when I'm at rest. The only times that I do meet God is in a time of rest. You get to just sit us down and push everything aside and just say, okay, God, what do you want to speak to me? That's when he's like, all right, hey, I've been wanting to talk to you about so many things. You know, of course he speaks to you when you're busy and in the middle of talking to a woman, you know, who's just sold herself to um, a client for 15 minutes, you know, and he'll say something to you and you're just like, oh, wow, okay, like, the Lord just spoke to me about this, you know, and you get revelations right then and there. But for the most time, it comes when there, there's a time of rest, a time when you can process with somebody who wants to listen and cares about what you've been through and really wants to invest in you and isn't just worried about who's going to win the Super Bowl. That's kind of what rest is, is meeting with God, and that I only become burnt out when I'm not with Him or I'm being drained more than I'm being filled up. Uh, prophetic art. My definition of being a prophetic artist is being an artist, but letting God be the one who expresses himself instead of it being an expression coming from me. It's an expression coming from his spirit flowing through me. So it can be a dance, it can uh, be a song, it could be a, a, a word um, just expressed. I've had a couple different ways that I've given prophetic art to people. Sometimes I pray about that person and God will give me a picture for them. Other times I'll just start painting and something real will come out of it and God will say this is for this person. And so even though it wasn't intended for them from the beginning, God shaped it and molded it as I was working on it and then he ends up telling me who to give it to. To make the invisible visible and um, I think God has given me the eyes to see things that he sees or you know hears what he hears and, and puts it and being able to put it on canvas or on a wall or different things like that and it's it's really it's, I believe it's something outside myself 
I'll do something and I don't know why and then a month later someone goes, oh my goodness, this is speaking to me in, in such a way that my life or I'll meet with somebody and God starts giving me all these visions of, of um, possibly things to paint for them and, and I describe it and they're like, yes! A wolf howling to the moon and it starts off with kind of this deep red dark colors and then as it gets higher up to the up through the wolf's neck and up through its howling mouth that you see it starts to get lighter and it becomes this blue color. The word that I have for it is that I have a voice. Like the wolf is howling to the moon and sharing its praises to, with the moon, so is my voice to the Lord and when I cry out to Him and when I call for Him and uh, He hears me and He listens to me and it stands out. It was a picture of me on a couch and it was, there was light around and behind but in front it was dark and I was kind of like isolated in a blanket and mm -hmm. what Erica had seen was that I was praying. She said I think the picture for her that was because she knows I pray in the morning in my bed. So it, that was what she was seeing. Mm -hmm. um, and that there was oppression coming against me. I had the support of heaven but that I didn't have any people around me. Mm -hmm. That I was ultimately alone in the, the horizontal realm. So it kind of put into a pictorial form something that was in my spirit and it also confirmed where I was at. It was something that was being confirmed in me, especially at the time when I felt kind of powerless in the situation. At the time, it was something that we, as a family, we were going through a lot of different things that were causing isolation and we were struggling with different things. And it was one of those things that in the moment, it makes sense, you know, that. God's, it, for me, it was like God was saying, I see you, and you're not alone. I am with you. You're not imagining this. There is oppression, there is challenge, and yes, you are alone, but you're not alone. Just as the colors faded from red to blue, from this strong, powerful, to also this gentle, soft thing, um, with the wolf howling, so, so is it for me and my relationship with the Lord that um, there's that spectrum and that he listens to all of it and that he cares about all of it. It's so easy to get caught up in condemnation or feeling like my voice isn't powerful or I don't have a say in anything and you know I'm vulnerable or I'm weak or I'm quiet. Um, all of those are lies. So it really just such a sweet reminder of who he is to me in a very personal way. It was just one of them like, oh, mm -hmm. you know, he's listening, yeah. he's here. Personal. Yeah. yeah, very personal, very personal. God loves to show uh, who he is. I've learned the majority of what I know about who God is through listening to his voice in doing my prophetic art because uh -huh. It might be a lesson he's trying to teach me through the painting or something he's trying to teach them through the painting, but whatever it is, his spirit really instills it in the image. So even if it's not on a level that makes sense logically, it's like infused in the paint, it's infused in the picture. And as I put it on the paper, it's like it gets infused in me to a deeper level. God gives me a vision for people or um, for a person and he wants to say something. Um, God's character is throughout the whole painting or even throughout the process. Someone sees God like and who he is for them. It, it touches their soul, it, it touches who they are, it touches their identity to be more of who they God's designed them to be. I don't know. It's just a it's a it's a freedom to express God's character, to express God's um, um, longing for man to see their potential and see His kingdom. I 
I think art is a powerful way that we can rest in him, both in receiving pictures and receiving the message that comes through that picture, and also just in throwing yourself into that act, even if you're not an artist, if you want to consider yourself that, it's still, it's not me being an artist that creates the picture. It's me being his child and letting his spirit tell me what he wants to say on the, on the canvas. And that's how I rest in him and learn in him. So it has nothing to do with my capabilities. I don't think anyone should think that they can't do it. Because even if it ends up being something that they wouldn't consider a masterpiece, he'll still teach you through it and encounter you through it and give you a great big hug as you put it on, on the piece of paper. Mm -hmm. It's perfect.